But on a more uh, 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 ecclesiastical way, I, I believe that, that God is going to bring, remove the desolations. Remember we did preparing the desolation? I believe the waste place is going to be removed. I can, I can, I can, I'm going to tell you, you can tell when God is restoring you because there's a song in your heart. Anybody ever? I can't sing a lick. But I can tell when God is doing something in me, a song comes up on the inside of me. I don't care if it's a song from yesterday. I don't care if it's a song for tomorrow. A song I haven't heard, but there's something, a melody. There's a rhythm in my spirit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in my spirit. And I'm here to encourage you. You say, well, I don't have it yet. Well, it, in my, my Bible, it says that there's more that are destined than the children of the married wives. There's people that are, in other words, there's more people who don't get it that get it. But don't get discouraged. You gotta allow God to bring your soul into a travail. The condition of my heart is important. The condition of your heart is important. I'm gonna call y'all. If y'all ain't looking at me, I'm gonna better, better look at me because I'm, I'm about to call names. Amen. It's a disgrace. You gotta connect. Amen. That's a sign of honor. Unless there's other things going on. But I'm here to tell you that there has to be a melody in our heart. There has to be a rhythm on the inside of a New Testament people have a, a song. They have songs are a part, a sign of our victory and a, and a sign of our release. So there should be a certain, you know what I'm saying? It, 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 it uproots discouragement and depression. You know what I'm saying? So you have to cultivate an atmosphere so that when we come into the house of God, we don't have to prime the pump. You already, you came, you became a song, so it's on the inside of you. But the reason why we don't have that melody, that song, that rhythm of the spirit is because we still think we're children of the desolate and we're not. We're married to him. He's, there's one husband. That's Christ. So the more we understand the consummation of our union to him, the greater the release is going to be. The greater the demonstration of that union will be. The efficacy of my faith will increase when I recognize that. That's why Philemon says in that one, it's only one chapter, verse 6, that the communication of your faith become effectual by the knowledge of every good thing that's in you that's in Christ. I put value on what's in this, what I carry. But my, we understand, that's why it said the travail of the soul. You got to understand that, that, that it's in order to, for the travail to, to be released, it has to be a song that's coming through you. You can't, so you, it says barren, but then it says there's a travail. As believers, we're not supposed to be barren. We're not supposed to be desolate. We have the Spirit of Christ on the inside of us. We have the earnest on the inside of us. We're not supposed to be barren, you guys. You got that? We're not supposed to be barren. Then you never ain't supposed to be barren. We're not supposed to be barren. Not at all. We're not supposed to be barren. But I like this too on a higher level. That I believe that God is in the season that He's going to connect people that don't have what they think they don't have. That's been desolate in understanding. That's been falling short in their walk with the Lord. That's what the precious promise in that first verse lets you know that God is in every place. That's, that's, see, the, the, the walls that was against us has been taken out of the way. The ordinance that was against us has been taken out of the way. So I have access to Him. The highway of holiness. I can go and I can, you know what I'm saying? I can bask in the presence of God on a consistent basis. That I don't have to be alienated from the life of God because of the blindness of my heart. Really, seriously, this is not spooky stuff. This is the legitimate stuff that God wants to bring to us. And we got to make up our mind that it belongs to us. Favoritism, bigotry of the old order is over. God doesn't have 
uh, favorites. Oh. Uh, yeah, the last thing about the study is that him and Dad got inside. Him. No, no, I believe now this now this does this work. You know, you know, I believe that you spend time with the Lord. He educates you in the things of the Spirit. But all of us have been given a measure of faith, a measure of grace, a measure of rule. It's up to us to activate it. We're gonna talk about that. It's up to us. I don't have to walk around with a desolate mentality. I don't have to walk around in exile or in isolation. You get what I'm saying? I don't have, or alienation. I don't have to walk around like I don't have what God has spoke concerning me anyway. Once I gotta discover it though. So tonight we're gonna try to discover some things. I, I want to empower you to understand this. That even in your weakness. You already know the scripture. It's what? Made perfect. So even when I don't feel like I'm saying, I'm saying, even when I don't feel like smiling, I smile. Because it's not about how I feel. It's what he's already predetermined concerning my life. Holy Spirit is here to make up the void. My life don't have to, I don't have to live my life uh, being void, without form. Or in desolation, or in waste. That I have the, the, I have the divine engineer in me. His name is the Holy Ghost. He's the, the, the architect of everything. But it's all connected on covenant. The more I understand about my covenantal rights and what's written in scripture, that's why I put it on Facebook. I'm going to talk about this, this particular three verses in light or in lieu of the new covenant. That's why he poured out his spirit on all flesh, y'all. We're going we, we to come into a maturity. The expectation of this house is not that we be perfect, but that we be mature. Amen. 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 Tell your neighbor, uh-oh, that's us. Oh. God wants us to grow up in the things of the Spirit. I'm here to tell you, He wants us to grow up. He don't want us to just bring forth wind. He wants us to produce what He intended. We carry something, you guys. You do. I know you don't feel like it. That baby ain't kicked in a long time. <laughs> huh? And I'm here to tell you that God wants us to person things. And we got to get to that point to understand that even in spite in my weakness, even though I don't feel like it, He already preset everything concerning my life. I've been eulogized. I told you guys that before. We've been eulogized. But He's spoken a benediction over my life. So I refuse to agree with anything in my life that's not representation or represents the kingdom. I'm sorry. I refuse to. I, I'm not, if it doesn't fit, uh, it, it's up to me to make the adjustments. He's freely given us all things. All things that pertain to life and God is. Right? That we have escaped the corruption that's in the world through us. Let's go to the next one. Number two, number two. Let's talk about that. Number two, number two. Enlarge the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of thy inhabitation. Spare not, lengthen thy cords, strengthen thy stakes. <laughs> no, I like to say that. Does <laughs> it sound real good? It, 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 it makes you. Make you just like, whoa. I mean, I read scriptures like that. I don't just like, the first place I can I like to put a little emphasis on it. Because I, I believe in the original language, that's what it was. It says, enlarge the place of that tent. That's what I want to talk about. God wants to enlarge the place of that tent. That's what he was doing with the desolate woman. That's, you see, that woman that's desolate is also a soul or a church that's desolate. But he said, I'm going to enlarge the place of your tent. And I believe that's what, that's what the Spirit of God wants to do because the spirit of reformation in the earth wants to expand us, wants to enlarge us, stretch us, lengthen us, strengthen us. You see it in there? We're going to talk about all that stuff. Tonight, I want to start off about the place of thy 
9, 10. You got to understand that's, that word is so key. Not only was there a historical physical tent, the O-H-E-L, o -H -E -L, I'm probably not saying it right, but I'm, that's, the spelling is correct. It's the same tent that, that Moses had when he transitioned in the, in the wilderness until he got into the promised land. The, the tabernacle of Moses was a tent, a mobile unit. Amen. And you can go through scripture, you can see all the tents, different places, the journeyings of them, even the, the 42 places uh, when they were in the wilderness. All that speaks of something. Everything that was written was written for our admonition, amen, and for our learning. So it says that the large the place of uh, thy tent. And I, one day I was doing a message, and I think I was doing all my chords are broken, and the Lord was dropped in my spirit. And I said, man, I ain't never seen it from that standpoint, but I'm going to try to keep it on the point that I want to go tonight. But, <laughs> but enlarge, to enlarge means to, you got to expand. You have to increase. You have to grow. God is looking for a house, a church, a people that can expand, that can grow, that can increase. Not necessarily in knowledge, because we know that knowledge increases. But I'm talking about a people that's going to increase with wisdom. 